All right, so maybe you want to make a multiverse, which is, I'm, there's like a million definitions of the word multiverse, so I won't get too deep into it. Uh, but the, the kind of multiverse that I'm especially going to talk about today is the most plausible kind of multiverse, the, the multiverse that's that's motivated by an actual like theory of physics that we're pretty sure happens in the real world. I'll get there. But, but first I need to define multiverse, right? We have our universe. We have everything. We have all the stuff, all the stars and galaxies and dark matter and dark energy and varieties of cheese that are so delicious. Don't get me started because that's a different episode. And we also have this set of physics, right? We have electrons and quarks and neutrinos, and they have certain properties and charges and, and spins and everything. And we have four forces of nature and, and just on and on. Like it's just the collection of stuff is what we call the universe. So are there different collections of stuff somewhere out there? right? Whether in space, can you travel very far and get to a different collection of stuff? Can you, is, is a different collection of stuff like, or perpendicular to our universe or running in parallel? So the, the different collection of stuff that I'm going to talk about comes from a, a theory of the very early universe called inflation. Now, we're not exactly sure if inflation happened. We don't have very good mathematical models for what this event was. So everything I'm going to say you need to take with a giant grain of salt. But the basic idea is we're pretty sure that when the universe was incredibly young, like we're talking 10 to the minus 35 seconds old, it underwent a period of enormously fast it's so fast i can't even put put adjectives on it accelerated expansion like it went whoop, really fast less than like 10 to the minus 10 seconds it's like 10 to the 62 times bigger or something ridiculous like that and it's never gotten that big that quickly before or since and I did a whole series on inflation, so go check out those videos if you're interested in the actual mechanics of inflation. But the point here is that in this, this standard picture of inflation, the whole universe goes whoop and then stops and, and slows down and then starts expanding from there. But what if that simple picture isn't so true or so accurate? What if some parts of the universe stop inflating before others. You know, what if it's not uniform inflation all the way across the universe? What if some parts of inflation are a little bit faster over here and some parts of inflation are a little bit slower over here? Well, imagine what would happen in that scenario. You'd have inflation start, everything's inflating, 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 and there might be some little corner over here, like some little pocket that's like, you know what, I'm done inflating. I'm tired of all this inflation business. I'm just, I just want to take a nap. And that piece pinches off while this area around it, the volume around it continues to inflate. And then maybe a little while later, there's another little pocket over here that gets randomly below average inflation, right? It says, you know what? I'm done. And it pinches off. And another piece, pinch, pinch, pinch. While the whole universe is inflating, you're getting these little pockets. And now what you begin to realize is that each of these little pockets is its own entire universe. And what you're looking at with this original giant thing that's inflating is really the multiverse, the collection of all these little bubbles. So each little bubble pinches off, starts expanding normally because it's done with inflation, but it continues evolving as it does. And in that little bubble, you get you know, maybe stars and galaxies and forces of nature and people that start asking questions about the multiverse. And then maybe over here in this little pocket, that bit of inflation ends. So this little pocket of the giant multiverse gets its own 
you know, cosmic microwave background, generation of first stars, evolution of galaxies, people to talk about the multiverse. And you get bubbles everywhere of these little pocket universes, each one thinking it's the whole entire universe because that's all they see. Because in between these little bubbles is faster than average inflation. Because slower than average inflation causes the little bubbles to pinch off, but in between is faster than average. So if two bubbles pinch off, they're just going to be pulled away from each other really, really quickly. So they're effectively totally isolated. There is the case. There is the case that if two bubbles pinch off very, very close together, super close together, and just happen to touch and kiss before in the rest of inflation pulls them apart, they might intersect a little bit. Like two soap bubbles touching. There might be a little brief intersection point in the young universes before they get ripped apart. Now, of course, we've looked for this. We've looked for this in the cosmic microwave background. This is the leftover light from the, when the universe was just 380,000 years old. This is a baby picture of the universe. If we're lucky and something like this multiverse idea happened and we just happened to be born next to a very close neighbor and we got to touch before we got ripped apart, then... The, the multiverse can be tested because what we would see in our cosmic microwave background sky is the intersection of two soap bubbles, which would be a ring. We'd see a ring over here and a matching ring on the opposite side. So, of course, we've looked for this and, of course, we can't find it. So, does that mean the multiverse doesn't exist? Well, not quite. The multiverse could exist, but we just don't have any direct compelling evidence for it. But the idea, the concept is still out there. So do we, do we live in a multiverse? Well, it's, we can't know. We don't know. There's somewhat convincing reasons to think we might live in a multiverse, but at the end of the day, we can't test it. So are you going to believe in it or not? And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe and like and share, comment, ask questions. Go to the Patreon to help support this show and do other things. Do good to other people. And I'll see you next time.